two young people are sent to a universe full of mystical creatures and must band together to confront a tyrannical wizard who wants to become the ruler of that land. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2019 movie, Return to Oz. Irfan Zhu is a so-called wizard who dreams of becoming king of the land of Oz. Despite being considered a fake by all the inhabitants, he has two loyal friends. Every morning, before sunrise, the bear will wake him up so that Irfan can use his great power in front of his Viking army, bringing light to that land. In exchange for the sunlight that the wizard claims to provide, he asks the soldiers to help him attack the Emerald City so that he can steal the silver shoes. However, his subjects completely ignore him and refuse to take part in this mission. Since he can't count on the support of those peasants, Irfan asks Bear and Clown for help to achieve his goal. Bear suggests that his master steal the magic book to convince his army to follow his orders. So the trio hatches a plan to take possession of the book and chooses a strategic day to invade the Emerald City. A year ago, those people managed to defeat Irfan with Dorothy's help. So the Scarecrow, the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion built a great monument in the girl's honor. The biggest difference with this statue is that it can move and even dance, as all its movements are mechanically controlled. During the celebration, Bear and Clown use a disguise to walk through the streets unnoticed and, at the first opportunity they find, they break into the statue. The pair are convinced that this is the new hiding place for the magic book and they interrogate Ruth Bilan to reveal the whereabouts of the valuable item. Afraid that the villains will do him harm, the man decides to reveal the book's true location, but the compartment is locked with numerous padlocks. However, all this care is not enough to prevent the pair from entering the hideout and, after bending the bars of the cage, Bear manages to steal the book. Meanwhile, in the real world, Tim, a teenager in love, pedals to Dorothy's house in order to confess his feelings for the girl. The boy asks for advice on an app he created himself and gets up the courage to go and talk to the girl. At that moment, Dorothy is in her room painting her nails and listening to music with her dog. The young woman dances and enjoys herself as if she were on a stage until she notices Tim's presence. When they meet, the boy gives her a present he has prepared for her and goes to get a vase so that Dorothy can put the flowers she has won in it. However, his plan doesn't work out as expected and Tim's little attitude ends up causing a major disaster. Suddenly, the couple hears the girl's mother inviting them to tea and cookies and Dorothy decides to go to the kitchen to get the snack. So Tim takes the opportunity to familiarize himself with his surroundings and takes a look in the mirror while he tries to pull himself together. Just then, he sees a pair of silver shoes shining on the shelf and decides to pick them up. Curious to find out what is causing the unusual shine, the boy begins to handle the shoes and ends up creating a portal linking two worlds. Immediately, everything around the boy begins to be sucked in, including Toto. When Dorothy enters the room and realizes what is happening, she runs into the whirlpool and is also transported to the other side. In Oz, Irfan finally manages to get his hands on the magic book, but in order to read it, he has to be wearing the silver shoes. So the man decides to use the Guardian's face to convince his army that they should invade the Emerald City, on the pretext that this is the will of the magic book. Yet he is completely ignored and made a laughing stock by his own soldiers. Suddenly, Tim appears with the silver shoes in his hands and Irfan tries to steal them. However, before he can take the shoes, the book attacks him, as it has an obligation to protect its master. At this point, Irfan and the bear are thrown into the forest and Tim is named as the new owner of the book, since he is wearing the silver shoes. As he can't communicate with the Viking soldiers, the boy relies on the help of his app to understand what the guys are saying. Discovering that they want rain, Tim accesses the powers of the magic book to fulfill their wish and becomes a source of great joy for the soldiers. Meanwhile, in the Emerald City, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion interrogate some witnesses to try to discover the appearance of the thieves who took the book. After formulating various combinations of drawings, they finally arrive at the exact character of the criminals and Scarecrow discovers that Irfan's servants are responsible for the theft. A few miles away, a lonely ogre is painting his den when strange objects start falling on his head. Then Toto appears and falls face first into a can of paint. After saving the dog, the ogre spots Dorothy and saves the girl's life by preventing her from suffering a fatal fall. Even after being rescued, the little girl is afraid that the monster wants to devour Toto and picks up a pointed wooden object to attack him, but changes her mind when she realizes that the ogre is just cleaning up the ink that has stuck to the dog. After discovering that the ogre is a vegetarian, the girl feels calmer and reveals that she is looking for a boy called Tim. In order to help her find the boy, the ogre attracts the attention of a crow and tells it that he has captured a fairy in the forest, whom he intends to cook soon. On seeing Dorothy, the bird immediately recognizes her and flies away to get help. When the crow moves away, the ogre explains that this is the quickest way to get the information to Tim. The moment the boy discovers that Dorothy is being held prisoner, 
he will go there to rescue her and the couple can be reunited. After a few hours of incessant rain, the peasants ask Tim to change the weather once again and make it snow. So he uses the powers of the magic book again to grant the request, and soon afterwards he meets Clown. The clown manages to convince him to give him his silver shoes, with the promise that he will send Tim back home. However, when Clown is far away, the boy realizes he's been tricked and runs after him. The carpet of snow that has formed outside the house prevents the young man from getting around easily. Because of this, Clown manages to deliver the pair of shoes to Irfan before he is caught. While Tim is looking for the doll, the book takes advantage of the fact that he's not under the influence of any master and asks the boy to repeat a phrase along with it. In doing so, Tim accidentally releases the book and it disappears in the blink of an eye. Determined not to let the object escape once again, Irfan goes after it and they both end up in a totally dark place. The wizard begins to be attacked by twisted branches shaped like human hands, but soon receives a pair of special glasses that allow him to see into a parallel reality. After being crowned, Irfan walks to the castle. Minutes later, the news that Dorothy has been captured by the ogre reaches the ears of the girl's three friends. Meanwhile, Tim is sitting on a large rock lamenting the fact that he has been tricked. Suddenly, three natives appear and he is captured. That same day, the boy is tied to a tower while he watches the peasants build a fire. Since he no longer has possession of the book, the boy can't make it stop snowing, and the only way the natives know to get what they want is through human sacrifice. However, when the fire is ready, the raven appears to break the news and Tim is happy to discover that Dorothy is also in Oz. Before going after the girl, the Vikings lock Tim in a basket and carry him to the ogre's lair. After climbing a long flight of stairs, Irfan finally reaches the castle and, upon entering, sees a beautiful throne in the center of the room. Then he sees a woman and discovers that the magic book also has a human form. After taking the crown he had always dreamed of, the wizard sits on the throne and can't contain his joy at discovering that he is the great king of the place. Meanwhile, Bear and Clown are still in the middle of the forest waiting for their master to return. The pair build a fire under a shelter, but both end up being sucked into the earth. They then appear at Irfan's castle wearing the same glasses as the wizard and are proud to discover that their master is now the king of the land of Oz. While Bear celebrates, Clown decides to take off his glasses and discovers the truth about that place. The clown sees the woman taking a drink to Irfan and realizes that the liquid is actually poison. So he knocks over the cup to save his master and asks the wizard to remove his glasses. At this point, Irfan comes face to face with reality and becomes desperate when he realizes what a dark place he has ended up in. Realizing that he has discovered the truth, the woman sends some twisted branches to attack Irfan and his subjects, but the wizard eliminates them with his silver shoe. At this point, the woman suggests an agreement between them and says that she will grant his greatest wish if the wizard gives her the book. On the way to the ogre's tower, Tim manages to free himself from the ropes around his body and destroys the bottom of the basket to escape. He then runs through the forest to meet Dorothy and ends up having an accident. After the fall, the boy comes across two saber-toothed tigers and attacks them with a piece of wood. After the young man runs away, the tigers wonder what has just happened and end up becoming friends with Tim. Unable to find his way to the ogre's tower, the boy asks the felines for help and one of them offers to carry the boy on his back. While Tim doesn't arrive with the shoes, Toto and the ogre take the opportunity to have some fun and play a few games of chess. However, Dorothy is already impatient and plans to leave to look for her friend. It's at this point that the trio realize they're under attack, as countless stones are coming through the glass window, and the ogre celebrates the success of his plan. The scarecrow has sent some rescue teams to bring down the tower, but, contrary to expectations, the ogre begins to dance merrily behind the walls of his fortress. Through his choreography and acrobatic dances, he manages to prevent Dorothy and Toto from being hit. As planned, the trio surrenders at the end of the battle and the girl is extremely happy to be able to see her friends again. However, she becomes worried when she realizes that Tim is not among them. Suddenly, the crow appears and attacks the ogre. However, when he finds out that Dorothy is fine, he decides to let him go and tells her that he has found the thief who stole the silver shoes. Just then, the soldiers appear with the basket in their hands, but soon discover that Tim has managed to escape along the way. So the girl embarks on a balloon trip to find him. Hearing Dorothy's voice, the boy tries to attract her attention, but is unsuccessful. While walking down a slope, Tim slips and has an accident. He bumps into a tree and meets a temperamental squirrel who guides him to Queen Romina's castle. After fitting a walnut into the opening of an oak tree, the doors to the palace open and Tim asks for the queen's help to get home. The rodent then hands him a whistle and tells him that he only has to blow it three times to get back to Earth. However, he refuses to abandon Dorothy and decides to continue his journey to find the girl. 
Suddenly, Urfin and his subjects appear accompanied by a herd of hybrid boars. However, Viking soldiers surround their path and the wizard sends the creatures under his command to attack them. At that moment, the monsters take on the appearance of giant boars with scorpion tails and run after the peasants. Terrified by the attack, Tim runs far away from the war zone and is found by his friend. The scarecrow then starts to lower the balloon so that the boy can get in, but Tim soon realizes that Dorothy is in danger and asks them to go up again. When the balloon gets stuck in a tree branch, Irfan orders the creatures to eliminate the girl. So Tim risks his own life to save her. When Dorothy is safe, the young man is stung and his body disappears. Tim is sent to the same place where the wizard was and his vision is distorted when he puts on his glasses. Just then, Romina appears to the boy and manages to warn him that Dorothy is in danger. Worried about his beloved, Tim removes his glasses and returns to reality. He quickly climbs the floating rocks and manages to escape the place through a portal made by the queen. At that moment, Irfan is launching an attack on the Emerald City and his monsters manage to invade the place. However, the locals use the statue that was built in honor of Dorothy to kick all the wild boars back outside the walls. As a result, the wizard is forced to use other means to win the war and decides to open the floodgates of the Emerald Dam in order to flood the village. By now, Dorothy is sad and hopeless, as she believes Tim has perished. However, when the boy manages to return to town, she feels relieved and her will to fight for the people is renewed. Just then, the raven appears and reveals Irfan's plans. He tells him that the wizard has just opened the dam and, if nothing is done, in a few minutes the city will be underwater. In order to avoid this catastrophe, Tim decides to take action and comes up with the idea of using the statue as a shield to defeat Irfan and his boars. He immediately takes control of Dorothy's robot and walks to the dam. At the sight of him, the creatures begin to retreat, but the wizard orders them to attack the enemy. As they are forced to follow his orders, the monsters try to use their tails to knock him down, but end up being defeated once again and decide to flee. During the escape of the wild boars, some stones slip into the middle of the path and the statue ends up falling. At that moment, Irfan is almost crushed, but narrowly manages to save himself. Tim takes advantage of this distraction to escape and runs to the conning tower. Immediately, the wizard goes after him and takes his entire troop to make sure that, this time, the boy won't be able to escape. After closing the floodgates, the young man is captured and about to be eliminated when his phone starts ringing. Curious to know what that device is, Irfan decides to pick it up and comes across the app created by the boy. Seeing Tim in danger, the rabbit has an idea to distract the wizard and help his friend escape. He tells him that, according to the prophecy, the true king of the land of Oz will have a red spot on the soles of his feet. He then asks Irfan to remove his silver shoes to confirm that he really is the guy mentioned in the prophecy. When the wizard takes the bait, Tim manages to free himself and takes his shoes back. He then tries to escape, but is surrounded by wild boars. While trying to steal the items, one of the creatures disappears and Tim discovers that the silver shoes are capable of eliminating them. At that moment, the boy puts all the monsters to flight and takes his cell phone from Irfan's hands. Now that he has managed to save the Emerald City and recover the magic shoes, Tim thanks his friend for his help and can finally celebrate his victory with Dorothy. That evening, the couple say goodbye to all their friends before returning to their world with Toto. Now that Oz is safe, the girl uses her silver shoes to transport them back to Earth and is thrilled by the beautiful farewell party thrown by her friends. Seconds later, the trio are back at Dorothy's house and Tim helps the girl tidy up the mess that has been made in her room. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.